John Stevens with Maple Grove Farm. We're out here in the pasture and we got kind of a fun experiment. I'm, I'm doing it on my own here um, to see how can we bring cattle back to the farm in a profitable way? How can we utilize cover crops the best? And kind of what we're learning here in our first step is that them two coming together is, is a really great companion. They work good together. So what we have is a 30 acre bay that next year will run in small quadrants for grazing management. And then next to us is another couple 30 acre paddocks with right now this year has corn and covers in it. So as soon as the combine rolls through, the cows will go over there to get as much grazing credits off the corn stover as we can, and then come back here for the winter. And what we wanna see here is we know we can follow an alfalfa field or a legume with a corn crop and have a very good crop. <clears throat> can we do a legume and, and brown manure from cattle and, and have a profitable rotation? So we're not gonna leave this out here for 10 years to dry up and be old, some old grass where we're hauling bales in July. <clears throat> the whole point is that we manage these acres to feed these cows so we're not hauling bales to the cows and, and we're putting money in our pocket. And the other part of it is how fast can we build and, and can we build the soil up? Can we use the principles of soil health? So it's kind of a fun experiment. And so last year the field was new seeded and then left fallow. I trimmed it once at the end of the year just to, to encourage growth, regrowth from the crop. And we were up there on the hill uh, in 18 to get a baseline test and we did some water infiltration tests and the best test was a half inch in an hour. Uh, the worst tests, which were there was many, uh, they absolutely failed. After three hours, we the water was still sitting there. After one year of fallow, we got cover, or we got clover and some mixed grasses. After one year of fallow, and then this year we took first and second cutting as a hay crop because the cows just couldn't keep up to the pasture and we were a little late getting them out here. Um, we did the water infiltration test and it just, whew, it was one of the best plots we had for water infiltration around here. Uh, on the rainfall simulator, it was the only catch pan that the water just went right through and the water was really clean. And so it's just simply amazing what happened there. And now can we start bringing life back to the soil in, in there? Um, so we're not gonna leave them. They're only gonna be here for three years. And then we move to the next bay. Then we're gonna bring in a grass crop or a corn crop to capture all the nitrogen that's out here and utilize it to our best advantage. So then we can start making more profitable corn uh, row crops, a little more profitable around the farm as well. So John, you kind of touched on uh, a little bit of the cover crop uh, aspect that's, that's part of this field here. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, kind of how cover crops are playing a role in, in your overall operation here? It sounds like this is oh. something that you are, you know, very much, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of blowing up and, and adding more and more. They, it is hilarious. Um, the, the, so, go back to 2011 12 13 on the hill back there where there's the yellow streaks coming down the hill we used to get these big gully washes it would wash about a foot deep two three four feet wide and it'd wash this dump truck of soil down the hill it was dirt back then and it'd wash it down this hill and what did we do to fix it was we took our tillage implements to drag it back up the hill and and fix that and it's amazing what if we did a simple oats with the corn crop and reduced tillage, simple oats and some radish, and you, by looks of it, it didn't look like much of a cover crop. But that not much of a cover crop, them little roots in that top inch of profile, they stop the water from running, they stop the soil from moving. Our infiltration rate has gone through the roof. Uh, the St. Croix River is only two miles south of us here. And after a big heavy rain event, 
this water used to run off just on the other side of the cows is, is a ditch that leaves the field. On the, uh, when we were full tillage, it would be brown, dirty water leaving. And in a half hour, an hour, you had that dirty water in the St. Croix River. And that bothered me, uh, not so much from an environmental standpoint, but that was my money. Cause we just spread P and K and nitrogen and sulfur out here. And now after a big rain event that you prayed for because we didn't have enough water in the soil, it all was running off. There goes all our money. And so it is amazing. And we started with just some simple covers and, and it has taken off on us and the tilth that they brought back to the soil. So we can walk around with a soil probe all day long and find no excuse whatsoever, no reason to pull a, a shank through the soil to fight compaction because that it has really conditioned our soil. And, and the water stand put on the other side of the cornfield is a ditch we used to tube. We used to tube down that waterway after big heavy rains when I was a little kid. And uh, now I'm, I'm to the point now we're starting to use the mow board to roll these ditches in so we can more of a drive through ditch because we don't need them as much. It's yeah, the covers have helped us. The erosion and it's just bringing life back to the farm has just been awesome. But what have been some of your, your best mixes and seeding practices with covers that have worked so far? <laughs> We started, so when I started, I was reading these guys in Missouri and Arkansas, and they would show this Italian rye grass and then uh, all these big, massive, massive cover crops in the spring that have to roll it down. And I'm like, I want that. And so I would, you know, you'd put in a winter, winter perennial or winter annuals, um, like a winter rye or uh, uh, some grasses and the next spring, by the time it was corn planting season, they were like this, not like this. So I guess that's the difference between Missouri and East Central Minnesota. But I, I, I started out copying them guys, using all these weird things that plants I never heard of. And that was a really frustrating experience. And I thought this, this cover crop thing is the stupidest thing we've ever done. What a waste. So then I just kind of stepped back like, okay, we've seen the value to it. So, we just went to simple things that we know we can grow here. We can grow clovers, alfalfa, your little hard seed legumes. We can grow uh, a lot of grasses, a lot of cereals, a lot of cool season stuff. They work very well and they work very well in broadcast situation. So I went back to that. And so I love oats, some tillage radish, maybe throw some barley in there, maybe throw a little clover. I have a hard time buying clover though because if we control the grass and the competition on its own, after three, four years, this field will be a clover field. So I have a hard time paying for clover seed. Um, Cura clover is another one that I would love. That is super expensive. Next year, we're gonna just start with a couple acre patches to just start moving across the farm with Cura clover. Um, but yeah, the cereals, grasses, both annual and perennials, work fantastic the annuals give us that faster growth the perennials give us just a longer a longer carbon credit to the soil a little more hardy in the fall uh, we get a september you know third week of september is our normal frost date um, with with our oats and stuff like that you might start to kill some of that off if we've got some perennials in there you get some warm weather on the back side they might start up and running a little more and and Anytime that little plant is growing, it's con contributing carbon to our soil and it's helping life. And it, yeah. So I, I look at a, I look at the cover crop mix like a sprayer mix. Oats are my carrier, just like water. And then we add a few ounces or, you know, ounces of chemical, pounds to the acre, a few pounds of some radish and, and like that. And it, it, it's a simple system and it just works really well.